Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is going to be a video all about coats. Now I think about this time last year I did a proper coat collection where I really rounded up everything I had from blazers to puffers to jackets to coats. Um, that was a bulky thing indeed but I really wanted to talk through some of my absolute favourite coats and as I was putting them all together for this video I kind of realised they're very much along the same lines. They are all long line winter maybe woolen coats. So I thought I would group those all together and share them with you today. It's kind of a mini coat collection or a subsection of my coat collection. Um, I'm going to talk about some of my absolute favourites and a couple of newer ones that I have added to my wardrobe recently. And small disclaimer here, nobody needs this many coats, absolutely nobody. I am fully aware of that, I just really enjoy a coat. A coat to me is kind of the ultimate accessory, especially autumn and winter when we really wear them the most. You can wear the most plain, basic, simple outfit and then put a coat on top and it just pulls everything together. And that's just one of the reasons I absolutely love all of these. So I'm gonna talk you through each one and show you what it's like on. I have a very basic, simple outfit on today, which hopefully should let the coats speak for themselves. My number one favorite coat, and in fact, most worn in my wardrobe, has to be this Zara one. I've talked about this so many times. It is just perfect in every way. And you're gonna see a lot of similar details in these coats and they're all details I tend to gravitate towards. So the length, first of all, I like a nice long line coat. I like lapels, I like a belt. Despite not really tying my coats up all that much, I like a drop shoulder and I like a cuffed detail here at the wrist. Um, so obviously this one encapsulates all of those wonderful things. This is a really great um, oversized and slouchy fit but not in a way that's too boxy or too shapeless. It just sits kind of perfectly, goes straight down. This is the reason I don't really tie it. These coats tend to look a little bit like dressing gowns on me when I do. This is always my go-to when I'm not really sure what to wear. Uh, if I'm stuck for an outfit, I will just throw on something all black, maybe a pair of black jeans, a black jumper, and then this on top, and it just works. I also really like pairing this with more laid back items. So I'll put it on with a hoodie, a pair of joggers, a lot of the coats that I'm gonna show you definitely work that way but this one especially i quite like to wear with darker colors so that is my number one coat i i absolutely love this one the only thing with this coat is you do need to invest in a good defluffer because black coats especially black wool coats pick everything up so the second coat i have to show you i have had in my wardrobe for a really long time this kind of gave way to my um love for a long line coat and it's from h&m it's one of the most colourful coats could we say that I own um, and it's in this beautiful like brushed soft material it's almost a little bit like fleecy and furry which I think is nice it gives it a little bit of texture and a bit of detail uh, again we have lapels we have dropped shoulders we have cuffed sleeves this one's a little bit shorter than the Zara one but it has a similar shape on the body so uh, it's quite an oversized fit but still has some really nice lines and a really nice shape to it. I love a camel coat. I think a black coat obviously is your number one staple. A camel coat comes second because it's a neutral. It really is going to go with anything you put it over and I always always find myself coming back to this one. I think that's a real staple of a good piece in your wardrobe is something you wear year on year and coats especially because we don't pull them out all year round. I think when it comes back to autumn and winter, if you're not wearing them, they probably weren't a good investment in the first place, but this one is definitely the opposite of that. So now we're talking really oversized, really quite boxy and very, very long line. This is a coat from ASOS. It has a similar texture actually to the camel one. It's got that sort of fluffy brushed wool, which I think goes a really long way at making a coat look a bit more casual as well, if you're deciding to style it that way. This is in a really gorgeous gray, and I don't, as you can see, have any other gray coats like this. Gray, again, is a great staple neutral color that's slightly on the cooler side, actually. If you're not so much into your warm tones, like your camels and rusty colors and beiges, gray actually will go really nicely with blues, navies, all those kind of cooler tone shades, which are really gorgeous. And this one really does have that big boxy fit. The body is quite wide in it, has a lot of movement to it, and these really exaggerated lapels that I absolutely love. Again, this is one that I really like to style in a more casual way. You would have seen this in my uh, recent capsule wardrobe. I'll link that up here if you haven't watched it yet. But there were so many outfits that I put 
together with this coat and it kind of went from being very dressed up, I was belting it um, because it's so wide you can get a really nice belted effect with this. I was wearing a hoodie under it, I was wearing it with a simple t-shirt and joggers. Very, very varied with what you could do with this. Um, and yeah, it's another favourite of mine. So the next coat is this one here from Another Stories and this is just the perfect neutral stony beige colour. It is so, so good. This one has similar details to the Zara one. It has a belt, it has big lapels, no cuffs on this one, but it's a little bit thinner. It kind of bridges the gap between a trench and a wall coat because it's not actually lined. And I find this one really great for layering. You can get quite a few different layers underneath this without it feeling too bulky. And it also makes for a great transitional piece too. This is the kind of coat that is gonna see you through in those kind of in-betweeny weather times. So when we're going from spring to autumn, from winter back to spring again, even as a throw on coat during warmer months. But then also it's gonna be a perfect winter coat when you layer up with the right pieces underneath. I think with a wool coat, this is probably as light as I would go. I would love to be the person that has an all white outfit, beautiful cream wool coat, but I'm just far too clumsy for that. And I will spill, I will. So for me, this taupey color is about as brave as I'm willing to be, unfortunately. Although it doesn't look like it because there's no detail here, this one does have pockets. Pockets in coats are such an essential to me. I can't, I can't wear a coat if it doesn't have pockets. My hands just naturally fall into something. Uh, these ones are a little bit further back because of that. They're like in a hidden seam, but it's still there, thankfully. So this would definitely be my pick for a really light toned, more structured woolen coat. And I think actually this is probably the one that I would be most likely to wear tied up. I think when a coat like this is a little bit lighter, you can definitely see more of the details. And um, for me, that just works a bit better. So now we're moving on to some slightly different shapes. This ASOS coat is a little bit more structured around the shoulders, so it doesn't have that drop there. And it has this little collar. To me, this is kind of like an oversized shacket wool coat, um, although it's a lot thicker. It's lined and much longer and heavier than a regular shacket would be, but it has all those similar details. So other than my black Zara coat, I don't actually have that many um, darker coats. This is one of them. So if I'm looking for a darker coat in a slightly different shape, this is what I will pick up. This has buttons all the way down the front instead of a tie, so you can button it all the way up like that, which gives a very strong kind of silhouette. I do prefer just to have it open because I like the way the lines go down. This definitely gives an outfit a very different look while still being a long line wool coat. It doesn't have quite the same vibe as the ones with the big exaggerated lapels and the belts. It just looks a little bit more, a bit more masculine, I'd say. A little bit more androgynous, a bit cooler, perhaps. This isn't one that I probably reach for the most. I really should wear it more because it is a beautiful coat. But if I want that slightly different shape, I know I have this one as an option. And then very similar to that one, but in a much lighter color, I have this H&M coat, which I found last year, I think. And it really was one of my absolute favorites. I wore this so, so much in winter and I'm really excited to get back into wearing it again. Similar shape and structure, it has the little collar, it has the buttons all the way down. This one does actually have cuffs on the sleeves, which I like even more. And the color again is that perfect neutral stony taupe. It's a little bit darker than the Another Stories one and it's almost slightly a gray. It is just a really interesting color on an interestingly shaped coat. This one isn't quite as long. I'd say actually it's probably the shorter of all of the coats that I have here. Kind of just hits below the knee on me. This one I think works really well with wide leg trousers or wide leg jeans because there's a bit more space at the bottom. That flow and that movement has a little bit more room. I'd say this one is slightly more cocooned actually than the darker gray one. It definitely kind of bells out towards the bottom. Okay, so then we come to the final portion of this coats video with something that I definitely class more as trench coats. They're kind of in between trench coats and coats, but they have that trench shape. They are both very, very long line and a little bit lighter in material. So this is actually the newest addition to my coat collection. You might have seen this in a vlog this week um, and it's a coat from Ray. I found this in the Black Friday sale and it definitely was quite a steal. When I bought this, I originally thought it was just a standard cotton trench, but it's actually made of a very thin leather. So it's a leather trench coat, which I think is really interesting. It's just a little bit 
different than your standard classic cotton shapes. So this has a really big oversized boxy shape to it, mainly because I sized up a couple of sizes in this because stock was very, very low. But I'm really glad I did that because it's worked out so well. I think if it was smaller, it wouldn't have so much shape and movement to it. And that's just what I really love. This one does come with a belt, which you can't attach. And I found this to be the case with quite a few belted trench coats is that they don't come with buckles. So you can't just wear it loose and wear it open. You have to kind of just tie it and hope for the best, hope it doesn't fall off. I'm not a massive fan of that. And like I said, with most of these, I probably wouldn't actually belt it, but I'll keep that there in the pocket just in case. This one has actual belted buckles here on the cuffs and that really pulls together this quite voluminous sleeve. This whole coat is just about extra volume. And then the way that it hangs, it's a little bit weightier because of the leather. And I find that just gives such a perfect draping effect when it's on, it never looks too big and bulky because it always just hangs so well. And then the final coat that I have here is probably actually my biggest investment in terms of my coat wardrobe. I think this is one of the most expensive things I've ever purchased. And it's this black trench from Totem. Totem are a brand just like Ray that I absolutely love everything they do. And when I'm thinking about making investments, I definitely always gravitate towards timeless and long lasting pieces. So I'm much more likely to buy a coat or a bag or a pair of shoes than I am to buy just some jeans or a jumper or a t-shirt. I feel like you're gonna get the longevity and the cost per wear out of items like this, which really can be paired with quite a few different outfits. So this really is a classic and timeless shaped trench. It doesn't have quite as much volume and material as the Ray one, but it definitely is boxy um, and oversized in its fit. It has the drop shoulder. It has this really beautiful long line detail of buttons that go all the way down either side. And the arms are cuffed with these actually quite long um, buckles. I always have to kind of wrap them around a few times so they don't fly around everywhere, but I like that extra detail. Again, because this is a black coat, I just find if I'm struggling, if I don't know what to wear, I can throw this on top of any outfit and it just works. It's just very, very easy and a little bit chic as well. A black coat is always gonna be the most chic option in my opinion, I think. I'd say this is probably one of the thinner and lighter coats again because it's a trench. Although it is lined, um, it definitely is a lot less weighty, which again makes it perfect pretty much all year round. That's the thing I love about trench coats is that there's never really a time that you can't wear them. Even just thrown on top of like a very um, slinky satin slip dress, these work so well. So definitely very versatile, very easy to wear all the time. I just love this one. I think it's so cool. So that is my roundup of my absolute favorite winter coats. These are all gonna be definitely getting a lot of wear in the coming season. So I will link everything down below that I talked about today and I'll try and find some alternatives for the more um, expensive items and things that also aren't in stock anymore. And I hope you enjoyed watching that. Let me know if there's anything else you wanna see a roundup of, any particular part of my wardrobe or accessories I'm thinking maybe doing shoes next. Let me know uh, and I will see you all again soon, guys. Bye-bye.